Hi everybody, Lord Mame here with another Insanity walkthrough for Mass Effect 2. This time we're doing Friend or Foe, and this is part one of three. This one, although a very straightforward mission with uh, all of the husks that are in it, is extremely long. Right away you'll see a number of uh, safes and terminals to activate. You'll uh, be able to play some clips for some incredibly creepy dialogue, uh, some of the doctors talking about going nuts, and as you can see, the tension builds, the tension builds, until of course, all hell breaks loose and, you know, everyone dies. In any case, uh, the main thing to know about this level is that though there are quite a few husks, the, the key is to uh, move very, very slowly and you'll find that each encounter has a series of discrete waves. Um, this first encounter I'm not going to break down into individual waves because it really will depend on how you trigger the, the husks, how many will actually spawn in each wave. Uh, I've given the total for the entirety of the encounter. Uh, depending on how you pull these uh, husks, it's going to be different for everyone. But th the idea is that advance and the second you hear that noise the distinctive groan of the husks back up you'll notice that I set my squad to be uh, ready at the top of the staircase so that they can shoot over my head and I just back up and let the husks come to me there'll be some abominations mixed in among them if you uh, if you happen to see one in a crowd of other other husks shoot at it to damage them as well with, with the explosion and between each individual uh, group of husks, you're going to find that your squad will move out of the assigned positions you've put them in. That's just a weird little ec eccentricity of the AI and the squad that you're just going to have to deal with. So every time you stop, set your squad to go back into position, and then go up and pull a few more husks. Unfortunately, depending on their movements, you might find that they're in position facing the wrong direction. You might have to get them to turn around by using a squad power or by uh, ordering them to attack manually. But uh, it's going to be something you'll have to do in between each set of husks, otherwise they'll just fall right behind you and eventually just charge randomly. I don't know why they do that, they have all the attention span of a mayfly with ADD, but that's just something you got to live with. Once you've reached the point where uh, everything is coming out from and nothing else is spawning, you can advance and move your squad up to this point and then advance a little bit further. Um, I'm actually being a little too cautious here because I was expecting expecting it to trigger just about five or six feet sooner than it was. But here's the second set of husks. Uh, it's the same thing, just move a little bit forward and then back up. Your squad again will default to following you between each uh, set of husks. So it's just something you're going to have to do two or three at a time. It, it really is much easier this way than trying to go right down in there and fight 18 to 20 husks while they're surrounding you and coming up the sides all around you. Try to save the explosive containers for a large group of husks. Uh, you might find that shooting some abominations might accidentally set one off, so be careful where you're uh, killing them. But if you don't happen to use the uh, explosive containers to actually kill anything, it's not really a huge deal. Uh, by advancing slowly and pulling them two or three at a time, it really uh, eliminates the need to have a big area of effect explosions or abilities. So between each set, set them back to uh, guard the area, advance, pull a few more, and then draw them back to your group. It's, it's like playing World of Warcraft except in space with guns and zombies. Okay, it's a bad analogy, but still, point being, move up, kite, bring them back. And once you've gone through three or four discrete sets of husks and pulled them back for disgusting techno zombie slaughter, you'll be able to advance to the next section. Um, 
the really big pushes don't happen until the latter half of this mission. Right now, it, it's basically just groups of two and three. You'll notice right away that uh, Zaid there, if you don't set them back in position, he'll just charge on ahead like, you know, like he sees something shiny and he goes after it like he's building a nest or something, I don't know. But take your time, go through each subset two or three at a time, don't rush, otherwise you'll just end up being surrounded. First few times I did this section, it was really hairy until I realized that there was a, a way to just trigger a couple at a time, and then it's just cake. You can blow through this mission. I say blow through, but literally it took me about 30 to 45 minutes doing it this way, but there is no danger of death as long as you take each section slowly. Here I'm advancing slowly when I don't need to, because uh, I, I don't remember where exactly the, each wave spawns. But pick up the equipment here. There's uh, some platinum and some heavy weapon ammo, as well as some uh, money on the terminal. And, of course, there's a sniper rifle damage upgrade, which is uh, very important. There are three uh, weapon upgrades on this mission alone, so always check your corners for all the available upgrades. So here we're coming up to the, uh, the next encounter. Just not even to the bottom of the stairs to pull the husks. There'll be two encounters very close together, but they trigger at a uh, discrete uh, distance from one another. So you'll be able to advance, pull the first group, and exhaust it before moving on and triggering the second group, which actually contains a scion as well. So you'll want to get rid of as many husks in the first group as possible uh, before advancing far enough to trigger the second group. So these ones, again, will spawn two or three at a time. Each wave usually has an abomination in it, along with one or two husks. Uh, towards the end, there'll be more husks to go with the abomination, but overall, it's nothing terribly dangerous, as long as you take it slowly. Got it. Even still, you'll notice that I've taken Grunt and Zaid on this mission, because both are fairly durable and able to withstand extended periods of mauling. Uh, it's very easy to get surrounded on this stage, and there are a couple of places in the mission where you have no choice but deal with a large group of husks at close range. Both of them have concussive shot, which you can use to give you some breathing room if a husk gets too close and you just need to interrupt its flow a little bit. Otherwise, if you're able to wear down its armor, a single concussive shot will kill a husk. Uh, that's very useful if it's an abomination as well, which will possibly damage anything else in the area. You can see here I'm trying to move up a little bit to trigger the next set of husks. This will be a much larger group uh, supplemented by the Scion. So whip out your sniper rifle, try to take out uh, some of these husks. If I'd been thinking I would have shot that explosive container right next to it and by the time I do I can't get a clear shot and end up accidentally sniping the husks, so. I set my squad to uh, protect the area and I just keep backing up. You can also recall your squad to back up with you if you find yourself overrun. Try to uh, rally at a, at a point further back. It's important to take care of all the husks in the area here before engaging the scion so that you can just deal with one thing at a time. So now that all the husks are dealt with, whip out the sniper, and this time I'll hit the explosive. So now the Scion is uh, trying to close to striking distance to me, and uh, I keep sniping it at the same time as it reaches each explosive container. I uh, use that to give it a little extra punch. And again, at this point it's nearly dead, I just have to keep sniping it, but unfortunately it's extreme range, just kicks in at the last second. So if 
I stay out of sight, it won't shoot at me, but I really only needed to peg it one more time for it to go down. And that's the end of that wave. Uh, once you've killed everything in this wave, scour the area. There's a great deal of ammunition, as well as other pickups in this area. Uh, you'll notice at the left and right, there's a lot of uh, ammunition. There will also be a couple of audio logs in the area. You can uh, play for additional background and enhanced creepiness. If you bring your squad all the way down here and you examine the uh, dragon's teeth in the background, you'll also get a little piece of plot, but I didn't do it for this video. Once again, your squad pulls out of their uh, position the second there's no enemies, and they automatically are set to follow you, so every time you have uh, a wave with small groups of enemies in each wave, between each group you're going to have to reset the squad back to their position. So through this door you'll have a little uh, cinematic and then directly into a major free-for-all. You can back up a little bit from your starting position in front of the door, but uh, you don't have a great deal of room to fall back. So try to uh, concentrate fire on one at a time, take them out, use your squad powers. If you can stay ahead of the curve, you can pretty much eliminate these things as they come, rather than being overrun. It does get a little bit close, but the uh, problem is when Grunt starts charging and uh, stops firing. Alright, so that's the first wave dealt with. Set your squad to uh, guard the top of this area. One on the left side here, and then one on the right side to get a good uh, base of fire. Then just come down just to the bottom of the stairs, you'll hear the groan and back up. Now there'll be a scion in this wave as well, and uh, because it's coming from the upper left, it's got a weird kind of angle on you, so you really won't have time to uh, stand at the top of this uh, stairwell and take out everything before it starts to attack you. You're going to have to back up a little bit further and let it, them come to the top of the stairs to attack them there. Again, try to avoid getting overrun if possible. If you find your squad is advancing and getting surrounded, uh, try to clear out the husks around them and uh, have them rally back to you. In this case, I wasn't fast enough and Brent died, but what can you do? There's a metric fuck ton of husks in this round, so it's not really surprising that at least one of your squad will die. Um, if you find yourself in trouble, uh, definitely revive your squad as soon as possible. If you find that you can get by without them, then save yourself the meta gel and just eliminate everything in the round to have the guy automatically revive. Now rather than trying to engage the Scion at some weird angle, just get behind this tank on the left side and cheat the corner. Uh, just put in a solid base of fire. You'll notice that he's shooting at me and it can't pass through the tank. So it's perfect safety I'm shooting him in. So once again, set up your squad. Uh, and then move a little bit further. There you don't actually have to go down to the bottom of the stairs. It triggers you go all the way to the left at the top. But again, nothing but husks and abominations. It's basically a evil shooting gallery at this point. But the good news is that if you happen to kill all the husks in this round, you get to pick any small item off the third shelf trade two of those in for a pick off the second shelf in the next mission. And that'll take us to the end of part one. Tune in next time for part two of Friend or Foe, the Insanity Walkthrough for Mass Effect 2. I'm Lord Mame. Thanks for watching.